Today we will be solving this problem called nested ranges check. So we are given n ranges and our task is to determine for each range if it contains some other range and if some other range contains it. Range AB contains range CD if A is less than or equal to C and D is less than or equal to B. So our input would consist of an integer n that can be as large as 2 times 10 to the 5th then follow n lines each containing two integers x and y representing our ranges and x and y can be as large as a billion and for the output we will need to print two arrays the first one will be either 1 or 0 and 1 if this range, like the corresponding range, contains some other range and zero otherwise. And the second array will be one if the corresponding range is contained by some other range and zero otherwise. So let's go to the drawing board and try to come up with a solution. So basically, this is our example. For each range here, we have to see if it is contained by some other range and if some other range contains it. So 1, 6 is not contained by any range, but it contains range 2, 4 and it contains range 3, 6. And equivalently, range 2, 4 is contained by range 1, 6 and range 3, 6 is contained by range 1, 6 again. So the first idea that comes to mind is to check for each pair of ranges if they contain each other. And we could achieve that using two for loops like this. So we could just look through our ranges from 0 to n and for j from 0 to n. And if i is different from j and the left boundary of i is smaller than the left boundary of j. So this would be the left boundary of i and this would be the left boundary of j and the right boundary of i is greater than the right boundary of j so this would be the right boundary of i and this would be the right boundary of j so in this case the range i contains the range j so that's why we would set the boolean of contains of i to true and we would do the same thing here for contained so if the left boundary of i is this time these are switched so if the left boundary of i is greater than the left boundary of j and the right boundary of i is less than the right boundary of j then we would set the contained of i to true but as we can see here since we have two for loops the complexity here will be quadratic so we would require n iterations for this and n iterations for this and for each iteration here we would perform n iterations here so the total complexity would be n squared and since n can be as large as 2 times 10 to the fifth then in in total we would perform 4 times 10 to the tenth operations which is way larger than our threshold of 10 to the 7 10 to the 8 so this wouldn't work. It would work if n was only up to 8,000 or so. So we need to come with a better approach, but this did not all go in vain. So what we can retain for, for, from this is that this is the criterion for checking if some uh, range is contains some other range. And this is the criterion to check if some range is contained in some other range. So let's start with content. So we'll start with contained first. And let's draw these intervals so we can visualize them. So these are our intervals. And for each interval here, we could, we could still look through all these intervals in O of N. We just need to get rid of this loop here. So what we need to do is to find a, an interval whose left boundary, we need to find this interval J whose left boundary is smaller than our left boundary and whose right boundary is larger than our right boundary. So to do this first part, we could, we could start by sorting our intervals by left boundary. 
So that way we know that all the intervals that came before us satisfy this condition. So our intervals will become like this. And now for each interval, like for this one, all the intervals that came before it satisfy this first condition. The left boundary here is 1 and it is indeed smaller than these two. So what we can do now is loop through the preceding intervals and see if any of them had a right boundary that is larger than our right boundary for in this case. And this also tells us that since we want all previous, we want to check all the ranges whose right boundary would be larger than ours, then in case of ties of left boundaries, so for example, if we had two intervals here, this one goes from 2 to 5, and the other one goes from 2 to 7. If we sort them just by left boundary, then we don't know how to sort these two. This could go in any order. So we need to specify how we should sort them if the left boundaries are equal. And as we said here, we would want to check for this, in, for this range all the possible ranges that went before it. And if we bring, if we keep the order like this and we just check the, in the ranges that came before it, we would miss this one. So in case of ties, we would always put the, the one with the largest uh, right boundary before. So if we switch this, so if we bring the other one, then in this case, we wouldn't miss this interval. So if we check the intervals that came before, we would account for this one. So our criteria for sorting is left of i is less than or equal to left of j. And so this would be strictly equal, so left of i is less than left of j. And if left of i equals left of j, we would sort by right of i greater than right of j. So the, the intervals with the largest r go first. So that's it for this. And now let's see how we could get rid of this loop. So let's reiterate what we needed to see what we need to find. So if we are at this position here, we need to check for all the intervals that came before it, whether or not there is an interval whose right boundary is larger than ours. So we could loop through all these and check if any of them has a larger right interval. But this would, would bring us to the starting point again since we're gonna have two for loops. But what we can do is have initialize some like a max right boundary and initialize it with zero. And as we move on through our intervals, like at the beginning, we are at this position. So we haven't seen any intervals so far. So for this, we will check if there is an interval whose right boundary is greater than six. And the answer would be no, because the greatest a right boundary we saw so far is just zero. So this interval, we can be sure that it is not contained by any interval. And now we're gonna update this max right boundary to six. Now we move on to this interval and we can just check whether or not there is some right boundary that is larger than this four. And here we'll see that indeed, we saw a right boundary that is larger than four and we, we would know this without having to look through all these intervals. So this would tell us immediately that indeed this second interval is contained by some other interval. And we would move on to this interval now. And again, the max right boundary so far is six and it is greater than or equal to our six here. So we would know that this interval is also contained by some other interval. And finally, our last interval, 4 to 8, has a right boundary of 8 and our max so far is only 6. So we know that this interval is not contained by any other interval. So that way we got rid of this for loop and we were able to fill up this array. So now for each range, we know whether or not it is contained by some other range. Now let's check for 
containing now. So now we'll take care of contains. So let's check out this uh, criterion. As we saw, we need to find an interval j whose left boundary is greater than or equal left boundary and whose right boundary is less than or equal than our right boundary. So since the left boundary has to be greater than or equal than our left boundary, so if we are at this position, we need to check the positions that came before it. So we, if we are at position 3, 6, we need to check these intervals and see if any of them has a right boundary that is smaller than 6. And again, we will try to get rid of this for loop. So instead of looping through all these values, we need to find uh, some clever trick like we did here. And now since we need to find a right boundary that is smaller than our right boundary, we actually need to keep the minimum instead. So let's let's keep the minimum of the right boundary so far and let's just initialize that to some large value say infinity and notice here that we need ranges whose left boundary is greater than our left boundary so we need to start processing from the bottom uh, as opposed to what we did here since we needed to make sure that our j interval had a left boundary that was smaller than our left boundary we started from the top now we're gonna start from the bottom and we're gonna check for this interval is there a right boundary that is smaller than 8 and the answer is no because the right boundary is infinity at this point so we're just gonna update it to 8 and move on to this interval now, is there a right boundary who's smaller than 6? And the answer is still no. So we're going to update this to 6 and move on to this interval. And now, is there a right boundary who's smaller than 4? And the answer is again no. So the interval 2, 4 does not contain any other interval. And we're going to update this to 4. But here, for the last interval, is there a right boundary who's smaller than 6? And the answer is yes, because the minimum right boundary here is 4. So we know that there will be a right boundary who's smaller, who's going to be smaller than 6. And since these intervals are sorted by increasing left boundary, we know that the intervals that are in this range have a left boundary that is greater than our left boundary. So we can conclude that there will be an interval that is contained by this, or in other words, this interval contains some other interval without having to go through all these intervals. And indeed, this interval contains the interval 2, 4. And since we only need to check whether or not uh, an interval exists without actually finding it, this will be enough. So that's pretty much it, and our total complexity will be here O of n log n, and we'll get the log n factor just because we sorted our uh, intervals here, and remember we sorted them by left boundary, and in case of ties, we sorted them by the largest right boundary. So that's pretty much it, now let's check out the code. So this is our program. And to keep things organized, I'm going to declare a struct that's going to represent my range. So this is my struct. And what are the things that I need for my range? I need a left boundary, a right boundary, and an index. I need the index because after sorting my intervals like here, I, I will lose like this index was 1, this was 2, this was 4, and this was 3. So after sorting them, I will lose this order. That's why I have to keep their index as well. So I know which index to fill in contains and contained. So that's what I'm going to do here. I have three integers, left, right, and index. And I also need a comparator for sorting. So I'm going to write it right here. So I'm going to overload the less than operator. And as we said, this is in case of ties, so if my left boundary is equal to the other's left boundary, 
I'm gonna return the interval who has the largest right boundary. And otherwise, I'm just gonna return the interval with the smaller left boundary. And now back to my main function, I'm gonna declare n and scan it. And I'm gonna declare my vector of ranges of size n. And I also gonna declare two uh, Boolean vectors that gonna represent contains and contained. And these are the arrays I'm gonna print at the end. Now let's move on, let's read our ranges. So I'm gonna read my left boundary, my right boundary, and I'm gonna mark my index as i. Then I'm gonna sort my ranges with my comparator. This is gonna be done automatically. Then I'm gonna initialize my max index as I did here. So max right boundary, I'm gonna initialize it with zero as I, as I did in the beginning. And I'm gonna loop through my ranges from i equals zero to n. So if my ranges, if uh, my right boundary is smaller than or equal the max right boundary so far, then it means that my range is contained by some other range. So I set it to true. And I will update max end with my right boundary. And I will do the same with the uh, uh, min now as we did here. So we're gonna, as we said here, we have to go from bottom up this time. So for i equals n minus one, i is greater than zero, i minus minus. I'll check if my right boundary is greater than the min so far. And if it is the case, I will know that my range here contains some other range. So I'm gonna set contains to true. And I'm gonna update my min. And at the end, I'll just print the first array contains and I'm gonna print the other array contained. And that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and submit. So that worked. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.